It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hey, all. Welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you you for listening today. Uh, the drug of the day is azelastine. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, I want to remind you to make sure to go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Great little study guide, refresher, a uh, no-brainer to have, certainly. So simply an email. Uh, we'll get access, get you access to that, and uh, obviously we'll get you updates when we have new podcast episodes available as well. So uh, go do that at reallifepharmacology.com. All right, so let's pick it up with our drug of the day today, and that is Azelastine. Brand name of this medication is Astapro, and this medication has recently... Uh, received OTC approval. So that's over-the-counter approval. So you may see patients begin to take this medication on their own. So it's important that you know about it and make sure you can educate them about it if they have any questions. So mechanistically, uh, this drug's a nasal spray. And you know most nasal sprays are typically going to be used for localized symptoms. Uh, There are a few exceptions to that, obviously, like Narcan. Um, But anyway, mechanistically, azelastine is uh, an antihistamine. Uh, So again, it blocks H1 receptors and uh, ultimately reduces histamine release and histamine effects. So histamine, uh, excessive histamine, is associated with allergy symptoms and of course, allergic rhinitis, so runny nose associated with allergies. And that is going to be uh, the primary use that you're going to see uh, azelastine used. Now, you may see it for non allergic rhinitis as well. Um, so that's a, a situation uh, in addition to allergies that you may see it used for. Um, it is typically going to be dosed one or two sprays in each nostril. Uh, up to twice a day. And there are a couple uh, different percent solutions. It's 0.1% and 0.15%. Uh, most common one I've seen in practice is 0.15%, uh, and that is what the um, over-the-counter, uh, approved over-the-counter dosage of Astapro is. Uh, with using a nasal spray, uh, the recommendations for azelastine. So when you start using that nasal spray, we do want to prime it or make sure we're actually getting a dose to come out. So uh, usually it takes anywhere between two to six kind of pumps of the spray, attempting to spray it. Uh, So I would say maximum it's probably going to take you is four to six. Uh, to get that fine mist to come out. Once you see that fine mist come out of the tip of the nasal spray, uh, you're going to be good to go. That uh, nasal spray is uh, primed for azelastine there. If that medication is not used for a long period of time, uh, generally that's considered three days, uh, we're going to want to prime that again and make sure we're getting uh, that light mist to come out. Usually it's only going to take, you know, one or two pumps uh, to get that if it's been somewhat recently used within the last several days. Uh, But again, if it's greater than three days, uh, the manufacturer does recommend priming again uh, before inserting into the nostril and giving it a go for the dose. So uh, definitely pay attention to that. Um, It's a good patient education point. Uh, to ensure they're actually getting the dose uh, that they think they're getting. Uh, With a nasal spray, uh, this gives me the opportunity to just go through some important patient education points. So um, 
blowing the nose, making sure the nose is clean and clear kind of before giving the dose because if it if all that spray gets caught up in mucus and it's blown out after you give the nasal spray, the patient's not getting the dose. So making sure uh, that we're getting um, that dose of the drug of azelastine uh, to the location is, that we need it in uh, is really, really critical. And you got to make sure that the, the nostrils are clean. So again, educating, making sure patients blow their nose and, and clean out their nostril uh, prior to uh, giving the dose. Uh, tilted downward, uh, this is something that I have seen um, an issue with in patients. I have uh, seen on a, on occasion a uh, patient basically laying down um, to take their nasal spray. And the big issue with that is you're likely to get a lot of that stuff uh, to run down uh, your throat, into your mouth, and it's going to you know taste nasty and things of, of that nature. So uh, again, having a patient kind of remain upright with that, that head, uh, with those nostrils head kind of tilting downward. So again, don't lay down. Uh, as you're administering, bring the bottle up to the patient's uh, nose. Keep that bottle upright. Insert it into the nostril. And then we're going to close the other side. Typically, it's done by um, using a, a finger and pushing on the other side of the nostril. And as you're inhaling through the nose, then you go ahead, um, uh, press down on that, that bottle and release that spray. After the administration... Uh, clean the tip with a Kleenex. Obviously, we don't want to be gross and have a bunch of snot and, and boogers drying up and crusting on there and obviously um, more issues down, down the road with that. So uh, adverse effect profile, uh, probably the thing that you're going to hear patients complain about most is uh, kind of bad aftertaste. So if they get some of that dripping down into the mouth and they can taste it, uh, that is a common complaint. Usually not life-threatening or anything like that, but definitely um, can be an, a nuisance for patients. Uh, dry mouth has been reported as well there, and then you know irritation, nosebleeds, uh, things from a localized perspective uh, can certainly be uh, reported there as well. Now, systemically, um, let's talk a little bit about this, and maybe I'll start with kinetics here first. So, uh, bioavailability is approximately 40%. So does that mean we're going to have systemic effects? And I would say, yes, it is possible uh, that you're going to have antihistamine uh, systemic effects. And with antihistamine use, we know they're used for sedation and sleep. That's probably the most likely thing you're going to see uh, is sedation if you do experience uh, systemic effects. Again, I don't think it's incredibly common. Uh, it's not something that I've, you know, routinely seen in practice or anything um, in somebody using azelastine nasal spray. Um, but I think it's important to know that the potential is there. From a metabolism standpoint, that 40% that is bioavailable and potentially absorbed into the s systemic circulation, uh, it's actually broken down by a bunch of different enzymes. Uh, 1A2, 2C19, 2D6, 3A4. Uh, it's a substrate for those. Um, so with that said, having multiple different pathways and low bioavailability in general um, and smaller quantities being administered, you're probably not going to run into any SIP interactions or be concerned with that. So uh, I think that's an important point to note, even though... Um, there is some metabolism in play with some of those SIP enzymes. So not going to be clinically significant in uh, certainly the overwhelming majority of patients and generally not something that I worry about. Now, kinetics, um, talking about um, onset of action. So this is one potential advantage in the management of allergic rhinitis compared to uh, nasal corticosteroids. So most common one I see in practice uh, is fluticasone for nasal corticosteroids. So antihistamines, uh, nasal antihistamines generally tend to work a little bit quicker. So onset has been reported uh, to be as quick as 15 minutes, whereas uh, nasal 
corticosteroids, it may take uh, days to actually start seeing a benefit from that nasal uh, corticosteroid. So definitely an important point uh, to remember with that. Uh, the primary getting back, you know, continuing on with uh, kinetics and also tying it into those adverse uh, drug reactions uh, with antihistamines, that sedation is a possibility. Uh, again, with low lower bioavailability, 40%, um, not large quantities used, are you going to see sedation? Probably not incredibly likely that you're going to see it with the use of azelastine nasal spray. But again, something that uh, maybe is important to be aware of in the event that a patient is reporting uh, that type of issue. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for any pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, NAPLEX, ambulatory care, medication therapy management, or the geriatric exam, Go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Great list of resources there. Uh, if you're going through pharmacology classes, flipping pharmacology flashcards on Amazon are available now, um, available in the United States anyway. Uh, great resource. Uh, lots of people are getting some benefit from those. Uh, good thing to have kind of all throughout your uh, career as a healthcare professional if you've got to take pharmacology classes. So uh, I've covered almost 600 drugs uh, in the, the packet of those flashcards. Uh, so definitely go take advantage of that. It's a great way to support uh, this podcast. All right, let's wrap up with drug interactions. So I mentioned some of the SIP enzymes. I'm not really worried about them clinically. So we can kind of throw those out the window, um, in my opinion, in general there. Uh, the drug interactions that you may likely be able to see, and it's probably not very likely, but um, if you're going to see some issues, it's probably due to additive effects. So CNS sedation, obviously there's tons of drugs that can add on to that potential effect. Opioids, benzodiazepines, so on and so forth. Um, so azelastine potentially could contribute to that CNS depressant effect. Again, not real high on my priority list when I've got a patient with 20 medications. Uh, there's probably 5, 10, 15 medications ahead of azelastine nasal spray that I'm worried about causing sedation. Um, but I just wanted to uh, at least state that for completeness sake. And then dry mouth. I, I did want to mention this one, you know, antihistamine type effects, maybe some anticholinergic activity. Uh, dry mouth could happen there. And certainly if we're adding on other medications that ha that can cause dry mouth uh, that have anticholinergic activity, um, we could definitely enhance that effect. So um, some of your older systemic antihistamines, your diphenhydramines, your tricyclic antidepressants, um, some of your... Uh, GI medications, dicyclamine, for example, um, plenty of drugs with anticholinergic activity that could potentially have an additive effect of dry mouth on top of the use of azelastine. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Do me a huge favor, leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, support the sponsor, Flippin' Pharmacology Flashcards, or some of the board certification study materials, and I've got other books as well. All those links you can find, meded101.com slash store. And of course, if you've got emails, uh, suggestions, comments, whatever, uh, don't hesitate to shoot me an email, mededucation101 at gmail.com, or you can shoot me a message on LinkedIn, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. With that said, thank you so much for listening. Hope you picked up a few practice pearls, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.